they had a sword yeah. on the side. Yeah. Don't be working and put your sword up. Yeah. Right by and I ain't talking about the natural sword, and I know some of us got, got something. Don't show me, don't tell me. Amen, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having it. Amen, if you got it, you got it. There's nothing wrong with it. Amen, amen. When the times are looking, I, 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 but that's a whole nother message, amen. But you just fill in the gap. But when the times are looking, amen, look here, I don't blame you. I don't blame you, amen. Somebody come in your home, amen, and, 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 and try to cause harm, amen. You have every right, amen, to stop them from, from doing what they need to do, amen, or they came to do, amen. So, you know, but here, it shows us something. It shows us something. That even though they was getting discombobulated, but why? Because they were hearing the news of the enemies was coming against them. It's amazing, before the work took place, that you ain't even hear anything about the enemies. All right. It's amazing when you're trying to progress, that's when the enemy shows up. It's amazing as soon as you put in the application, as soon as you make an effort, or as soon as you try to, you, you, ever, you ever try to say, okay, today I'm going to do better at Bible study. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to start reading more of my Bible. Then all of a sudden, sleep hits you. Ah. You, you know, and all of a sudden, just, the, the whole atmosphere get comfortable all of a sudden. Hey man, you're yawning more. You weren't yawning when you were eating the peanuts and swallowing soda and eating chips. Hey man, at your desk, man. Soon, soon as you sound like that, soon as you put forth an elbow to, to, to grow spiritually, then all of a sudden laziness kicks you. Hey man, and, and, and that's what the enemy try to do. He'll try to throw sleep in your face. And he'll even call some people to sleep in church. Sleep in church. That's what the enemy does. That's why if you go back to the Matthew chapter 13, when it talks about the different seeds in the soil. He says some soils were stolen, some soils were thorny, and the birds came. The birds represent Satan. And yeah. Satan, all he wants to do is snatch up the seed Woo. that are being planted huh. in your life. Yes, sir. Which causes you not to grow. Hmm. Yo, you can't, your seeds can't grow if they stay in your hand. Yeah. And that could be financial, that could be whatever you think it ought to be. It could, it could be the natural from the perspective of something you plant as well as something you give. You know, that's why some people say, I can't get blessed. Things ain't turning around for me. Well, what are you doing with your seed? Hey, that's real. The Bible says in Luke 13, 34, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if your checkbook is everywhere else except for in the kingdom work of God, then chances are you're not getting a kingdom response. A return on your investment. It's not about just giving the cross of the door. It's not just about giving it to me. No, it's about giving it to God. Everything in life has a principle in order to produce a result. You go to school to get education. Amen, somebody. So you have to apply the necessary principles in your life in order to get the results you're looking for. Yes. Nobody can't bring results on you. Okay. No results requires work. Oh. Yes. It requires diligent work. You have to work at it day in and day out. Sometimes you don't feel like it. Elder Rose was saying earlier, and it's true. Some Sundays you don't feel like it. Some, some Sundays you want to sleep longer. I don't know about you, but that happened to me sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. You don't think I want to lay down at 11 o'clock? Hey Amen. One time I was sleeping. Uh, a couple weeks ago I was sleeping so long. But when I walk in the room to my, you, you gonna sleep through? You gonna sleep till to noon? I ain't realized I was sleeping noon. All I know is I was, I was feeling good. Yeah. Sleep. <laughs> on a Saturday, sleeping good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause then you go to work all week, so your body is used to just moving and moving and moving from the time frame that you you, you know you got to get up. You whether you're working ten hours, twelve hours, eight hours, or pack part time. If you're working, if you're moving, you don't get time. And guess what your body do? You're dealing with your kids. You're dealing with the family life. You're dealing with your husband. You're dealing with your wife. You're dealing, 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 dealing. You prepare food. You get yourself ready. You you email it. You text message. You phone call it. And guess what your body do? It catches up with you. Mm -hmm. As soon as you lay down, that's why some people snore louder than others. That's why some people sleep harder than others. Because your body has caught up with you. And it comes a place that you have to rest. It comes a place where you have to relax. It comes a place where you have to sit down for a while. And let your body just rest. But here they didn't have time to rest. Why? Because the enemy, the enemy, the enemy had shown up. 
And it was getting discouraged to one perspective. It was getting discouraged. Why? Because the people had heard about the enemies. Yes. The people knew about the enemy were coming, and they were shaken to a point. Yes, they were. See, everybody position ain't the same. But that's why Nehemiah was there. Nehemiah served as an encourager. At that time, Nehemiah had the faith to believe, but he encouraged the people. He didn't rebuke the people. He encouraged the people. Yes. He encouraged the people. Yes. Sometimes we spend more time chastising the people instead of encouraging people. Yes. We got to encourage each other. I need encouragement. I don't know about you. Now, I, I, I can make this journey. I don't need encouragement every day to, to, to get me where I need to go. But every now and then, I need somebody yes. to encourage me. Yes. But then we get to a point where we get strong in the Lord. We be like David in 1 Samuel chapter 6, uh, 30 and 6. And David say, and he encouraged himself. Yes. Amen. Sometimes you, you can't wait on a cute partner. You can't wait on a prayer partner. You can't wait till somebody get in agreement with God with you. No, you got to get enough strength. You got to know God for yourself. That's why your relationship with God is important. And it can't just be when you pray. No, it has to be when you meditate on the word of God. That's the way your relationship with God grows. It can't just be some old part-time lover. It can't just be some God you just worship and you acknowledge on the weekend. And then soon Friday night hit, you get drunk as Cooter Brown, high Scottish. And then on Sunday morning, you want to come in and thank God just going to do a for you. No, it doesn't work like that. You got to have a real relationship with God. You can't do that in your natural home. Because sooner or later, somebody ain't going to want to be with you. Because they're going to know you're just faking it. Right. You cannot fake it with God. Amen. The Bible says in, in Nahum 1, 7, for the Lord is good. And he's a stronghold in a day of trouble. Yes, sir. And listen to the last part of that. And he knoweth them yes, he that trust in him. Yes, he See, you got some people, they just run in at the last minute to God and think that he's just yeah. going to fix it. He's going to yeah. work it out. No, 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 no. You got to have a real, God knows if your relationship is sincere with him or not. Yes, but here, the people. Go back to verse number 15. And it says, and it happened when our enemies heard, it was known to us that God had brought a plot to Mecca. God had revealed it to them. Do you know God will reveal some things to you about certain people in your life? And they'll say, oh, you acting funny. No, you ain't acting funny. God done re revealed their plot, their plan, their scheme. God done revealed to them that this person don't really mean you no good, even though they say certain things out of their mouth, but in their actions. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't mean you no good. All right. They don't mean you no good. And God will show it to you. Sometimes he'll show it to you, and they'll be your cousin. And God bless their heart, you love them so much, but at the same time, they're toxic. And some people are so full yes. of toxicity, all they do is train the very life. Yes. Yes. And you wonder why you can't grow. Why? Because you have to cut off certain people, cut off certain things, yes. cut off certain actions, yes. come on, some of certain activities. And, and sometimes we wonder why we can't move forward is because certain things we still in unattainable and secret. Amen. We ain't even saying nothing about it. All right now. We gotta know about it. Don't lose about it. Yeah, somebody. But at the same time, we have to be careful in this walk with God. Yes. That's why everything is not meant for public display. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. There's certain things you do, everybody should know. If you've been working out and your hips look real good, amen, that don't mean go put on some shorts where everything is being revealed, and then all of a sudden now you're looking for likes on Facebook and Twitter and come on and Instagram. Come on, something ought to be just proud of it. We got to get back to our moral standards of privacy. If certain things you just don't put on public display, everybody shouldn't see it. And then people say, oh, why they looking at me like that? Because you reveal everything. I used to tell single people, oh, all he interested in my body is that's all you show them. You show them something different, they be interested in something different. The one that be more interested in your wife, if, if you just quit trying to be flashy with your money and your portfolio, we, we, we think things is impressive. The body gets old. Sooner or later, she, it ain't going to be no Coca Cola. Yeah. They ain't problems ain't financially. 
They had a problem with their children, problems with their cousins, problems with their family, problems with other stuff. So people go through things. But yes. one thing I like what Nehemiah did. Yes. He put the families together. He yes. put the people yes. together. He told the family, he said, put a sword on your side. And make sure as you build it, you are equipped. Right. And sometimes we, we, we build in things, but we're not fully equipped. Yeah. We're, so, we're so busy, we're so focused on the construction side that we don't know that we still have to stand guard and be protective. And just like a father, amen, somebody, even though my children may get a certain age, amen, I may pray over them, but I still got to protect them at the same time. Yeah. Why? Because I have their best interests at heart. So therefore, we do certain things as a parent we do, certain things God do, because he loves you so much Amen. Amen. that he watches over yes, you. Sir. He protects you. Matthew 24, 10 to 13 says this, and then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Don't be surprised when these people that are going to these online uh, places are getting these Fake degrees and all the stuff online, calling themselves a bishop at 21, calling themselves a pop, apostles, and calling themselves all these titles. Mm. Jesus. Mm. People going online yeah. ordaining themselves. Yeah. People doing all kinds of stuff. Don't be alone, saints of God. Yeah. The Bible says it right here in the text. It says many. It didn't say some. It didn't say a few. It says many. Many will arise. Yes. Many will lead many astray. Yeah. How are you led astray? Huh? Right I'm so glad you asked That's the question. Right. It's because the doctrine that you're being indoctrinated with. In other words, if you are feeding on certain information and you're turning that into some knowledge, even though it's some concocted faith, false knowledge, therefore you can be led astray. And the Bible says, and because lawlessness will increase, unrestrained sin mm -hmm. will increase. It's going to increase? Yes. yes. Why do you think you keep hearing about shootings yes. after shootings? Yes. They're not going to stop. That's not speaking nothing negative. That's not speaking nothing in the atmosphere. The Bible says, let's go back and read it. And because lawlessness will be increased, the law Right there in the text. Matthew 24, 10 to 13. Yes. So we wonder why what we're seeing. Yes. It is some people try to put the blame on the church. Yes, they are. Oh, they ain't praying enough. Oh, they ain't preaching enough. Oh, they ain't doing this. And oh, they ain't, oh, no, and no. No. They were doing this in Jesus' time. That's right. And I'm talking about Jesus was performing miracles. And they still were talking crazy as a man for They still, did, did Karen still had them, the, the, the boy baby was killed? Yeah. Did he have him killed? Yeah. And even after Jesus was born, Karen was still making his threats. That was Jesus said, go tell that fox until this happened. When he talking about ain't nothing to that. My prophecy will be fulfilled before I go to the cross. And he never take me nothing about it. Matter of fact, the Bible said that it came to a point that hell was so out of place that the Bible said he allowed the worms to go eat him up. I'm talking to God I serve. 